All right, welcome back. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, exciting time of the year. First, uh, first practice. It's a lot different than it used to be. Uh, most of you all are old enough in here to, to remember when you, you couldn't meet during the summer and didn't have any OTAs. Uh, and your first practice was truly your first practice. Uh, it's not the case anymore. Thankful for that. Um, we basically had 16 OTAs. Um, we met quickly in the summer before those OTAs. So kind of had a running start uh, into practice. Um, today and tomorrow is really about teaching this group how to meet, how to walk through, how to practice. And then um, making sure we know our signals, our alignments, our assignments, and uh, more mental days than anything. It's hard to really evaluate guys when we're just in helmets. Uh, practice threes when we put shells on and really can start the, the evaluation process then. Uh, we got a lot going on at practice right now. You guys are going to be out there tomorrow. I think you'll you'll see it. Uh, John was out there today. He can probably tell you it's, uh, it's organized chaos. There's – uh, a lot of people, a lot of moving parts. Um, we're uh, we're two spotting all our group and team periods, and so what I mean by that, we have a every every team drill or every group, meaning seven on seven, one on one, those type of drills, is everybody's getting reps. So if we have a first down period going on one field, uh, there's a there's a the exact same drill going on on the defensive field, and so everyone's getting reps for the first two weeks or so, and it's really good for your young people you know, where they can feel part of it and everybody gets evaluated. And I think that's important. Uh, Mike Joseph and, and our strength conditioning staff, I think they've done a really good job getting our guys ready. I, you know, it was nice and cool today, that helped, but we didn't have any conditioning, um, any any issues at all. I thought the guys moved around well. And the summer with those guys is really about preparing for fall camp. And I felt good finishing day one. Um, and then the first two and a half weeks of camp is really about preparing for the season. and preparing for all of our opponents, anything different that we're going to see. And then those last two weeks is really prepping for Penn State. Our, and, and so that's kind of how we have it set up. Um, as far as uh, we have everybody here, you know, and I know y'all are going to ask, everybody's here. Um, all the new transfers are out there today. Feel free to ask about them here in a second. Uh, injured guys, I'll give you a little bit of update. Um, Braden, uh, Braden Dudley had a little off-season surgery. He's limited. We're hopeful he'll be back uh, by, by early in the year, if not the first game. Uh, Josiah is, is well into his rehab. He's handled it well. Uh, talking about Josiah Schreider. Um, Asani Redwood is, is ahead of schedule. Uh, pleased with where he's at. He's doing some non-contact stuff. Um, I think he and, and, our, and our training staff is really be commended on that as well. Cortez Braham, he may or may not be out there tomorrow or tomorrow when you guys are there. Nothing, sir. He's he's sick, so so he was very limited today. Probably will be limited again tomorrow. Um, nothing serious. Davis continues to come back from from his surgery that uh, he got at the end of last year, and so he's out there, uh, limited, not full go yet. Um, Zach Frazier was a full participant. And so, if there's anybody else that y'all want to know about, uh, ask. But with that, I'll, I'll take questions. Greg? So, you said everybody's here that you expected, mm -hmm. um, newcomers. Just numbers, you're, what, you're allowed 110 now? Do you have all that filled? Well, you're really allowed uh, up to 120. 120, okay. Yeah, and so they changed that rule, which was a real positive rule. It's a, uh emergency waiver, but we've always, most people's Title IX numbers is right around 120. So our roster size is is really determined um, by Title IX. And so for us, it's 120. And in the past, it used to be you had 105 in camp, and then it got expanded to 110. But you still had to tell 10 kids, because everybody's here in the summer. This is a year-round deal. Walk-on scholarship, it's a year-round deal. So you used to have to tell, you know, you know, anywhere from five to ten kids, they couldn't come to camp. And that's not the case anymore. And that passed uh, two or three weeks ago, which is – I think that's a positive move. So those – the walk-on kids you've just added, most of those are just in getting here now? No. Um, so we've got about four or five that will be here when school starts. Um, and the rest of them have been here since our second summer session, which was the last week of, of June. Okay. So Traylon Ray and – a uh, high percentage of our um, walk-ons came in in the second summer session. So I think it was, I don't know, last week of June, right after our last seven-on-seven seven camp. You feel about good 
about the numbers. You've got at all your position groups. Notice you got seven tight ends out there, which is more than you know, normal. Pretty happy with what you got. Number yeah, one. our depth. Our depth is better. Um, we need we need some some walk on O linemen. We've lost a few of those guys, so um, we've got we've got enough scholarship. But I'd like to have a few more walk on offensive linemen, and then you know a linebacker um, because of Trotter's injury. You know, I'd like to be a little deeper there. But I think if you, if you look, not that we're, you know, we wouldn't like to be better at some spots. I think everybody would. But from a numbers perspective, we can go out there and practice like you saw today and have two full units where everybody's getting work and um, the competition's still good enough. You're not burning your guys out throwing. Not, you got enough guys. Yeah, we got enough guys to rotate. Absolutely. Bob? Yeah, each team has a personality of, of its own. Uh, mm -hmm. How long? Well, I think it starts kind of January, and then the way the rules work now, because in so, so in January you've got you know I don't I don't want to put percentage, let's just say sixty percent, you know, and then you start the summer and you've got about ninety percent of your guys, and then once fall camp starts, you're you're closer to hundred, and so I think the the personality really starts in in January, and then it carries and kind of builds through the summer, and then during your first two weeks of camp. I think it's kind of solidified is and then when you get in the season it's how you handle your first big piece of adversity um i like this 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 team's got a kind of a youthful energy about it um they're excited um they're they're a confident group um they're they're a group that that is uh really hungry right now has a chip on their shoulder uh they're fun to coach and so but i think it's too early you know i want to see how we handle you know today we're in shoulder pad i mean we're in helmets you know it's 75 degrees you know, it's uh, kind of all purple skies and butterflies. So we'll see how it goes once it gets a little warmer and there's some contact. You mentioned adding speed at wide receiver a few times. How do you feel about what you did in that department? And have you noticed, mm -hmm. you know, that on the Yeah, I think everybody's really kind of underselling our receiver career a little bit. And, and I get it because if you look at it, the old way of doing things when you looked at, um, you know, kind of preseason stuff is you look at returning production. But the only returning production people count is – returning production on your team. And so we did. We lost a high percentage. You know, Bryce and, and Sam were, were um, you know, very productive the last couple of years as far as number of catches and, and those type of things. So um, I get why people are maybe underselling, but I really like what we've done. We're, it's the most versatile group we have. Um, it's We catch the ball better. Now we got to go do it in a game. But, you know, as far as just catching the football – and being pure pass catchers, we're at a higher level than we've been. Uh, I like the the mix up. You know, I kind of use it. You know, I've used that basketball reference a couple times talking about them. We've we've got guys that um, that aren't similar. You know, I think that you know you just think about like Devin Carter's a big, strong guy. You know, EJ Horton is a is an extremely fast guy. Jay Sean Polk is fast. Cortez Braham is a, is a physical guy. You know, you got Preston, Far uh, Preston Fox, who's very shifty. Um, and then, then you got Noah Massey, who we added, who's just a big human that's playing slot receiver. And so I like the, I like the different body types we have. I like the different styles. Um, we, in this first two weeks of camp, we got to figure out their strengths and, and how we use them the best. And that's, that's on us as coaches. But, uh, but I like the guys, and I like the mix of, of what, what their skill set is. Is the plan similar? Is it advancing? Like, what have you seen in terms of that now? Because it's been that was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. so you've seen that. What have you seen from getting back to the basics with the defense? What do you like about what you've added to fit into that? And then the, as much of the planning you give, I guess. Yeah. Time. No, I think that you know we went back and and really the process during the off season, talking about December and January off season, is really analyzing what our issues were, and so. For us, a big part of that was was simplifying, is improving our tackling ability, and um, just fundamental football. And we're really sticking to that. You know, I think the the thing that's that's easy to do from a coaching perspective is you get into to camp and and you have your install set, and then you just want to start to do a little bit more. And that's what we've got to be really careful about because. Um, We've got guys that our team speed is the best we've had. 
And so I want our guys to play fast. And we're really focused on our alignments, making sure we can get aligned, our effort to the ball, and then being physical at the point of contact, whether that's shedding blocks or making tackles on the ball. And, you know, we're going to be – we'll mix it up on third downs, but, you know, in, in our base defense on normal down and distance in the open field, we want to be – we want to get lined and, and continue to be simple. Well, you talked about it down at media days. Can you go into the play calling decision? Yeah, I, I just think it goes back to this is, um, you know, made the decision that what we were going to do offensively, um, you know, back during that December, January uh, term. Uh, Chad's done a really good job as a coordinator, and, and he'll lead those. He's going to lead those unit meetings. He's he's kind of the voice in, in practice. But it goes down – this is going into year nine for me as a head coach. And so – uh, one year didn't call the plays. Uh, the rest of them did. Now, Jared was very, very involved and, and called some games at the end of that um, uh, 21 season. And so, um, but for the for the other seven years as a head coach, I've always called it. And I think there's some real advantages of being able to do that as far as managing the game. Uh, taking a step back and not doing it last year is not something I necessarily regret because I think it was good for me from, from a growth standpoint. Um, it's it's been beneficial as far as because it really gave me some time to think about okay who do we need to be here for us to be successful offensively um, you know what is what do what do my weeks and days look like as a play caller and and for me it just came back like the most success we've had I've had as a head coach is is doing it and um, you know the only reason I have this job in the first place is because I was a really good offense coordinator and so. Um, I've got a really good room, and, and Chad and, and Reagan and Matt, those guys, we played a lot of games together, and I think they're really bright. And we added some young energy and some, I think, got great coaches, which, you know, Bilal got recognized 30 under 30 yesterday, which I thought was a really good kind of feather in his cap. And so, but that's kind of all the, all the items that went into it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so, like, Sean will be up top. And, and he's always been, um, even with, uh, with Graham last year, you know, Graham really uh, leaned on him as well. And, and we'll continue to do that. And Chad, Chad and Matt have had a, uh, a lot of say in our run game, you know, going back probably as far as two years ago. And so that'll, they'll continue to do that. I think a lot of it, like the actual in-game play calling sometimes is a little bit overrated. It's, it's more about getting your, getting your game plan set early in the week and being able to rep those plays and then having answers within the game. I think that's, that's probably as much. And answers within the game a lot of times comes from those guys um, that, that aren't necessarily the play caller because as a play caller, you're thinking ahead. And then in between series, those guys can really help you because they're not, they're not necessarily focused on the ball as much. They're looking at other things. Um, but, yeah, for sure. That's a long answer. But, yes, they'll definitely have a – have a say. Say again. No, yeah, yeah. So you're asking kind of how we did it. Uh, in the, you're asking about, yeah, yeah, not not as much right now. Yeah, not as much. Just is it fair to say that their role in terms of play calling in game could also develop as the season progresses? Yeah, I think that's fair. Yeah, I think that's fair. Like, here's the thing that 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 y'all need to understand. That y'all understand. I think you probably already do this, but like, my trust level in in those guys. We've we've been through a lot of battles. It's extremely high, and and I I listen to them. You know, they're not just giving suggestions that are just hey try this. They they have really good reasoning behind that. And um, when they tell me things, whether it's practice games, you know, planning purposes, like I I, I listen. No, Chad, yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, here, here's, and I think I've said this maybe in this setting before, is sometimes you add, you add responsibilities to people and they get really bogged down. Uh, and then sometimes you, you add responsibilities to people and they really flourish. Um, and I think that's what's happened with Chad is he's really flourished. Um, he's gifted in front of the room. Um, he, uh, he does a really good job. Like he's a guy that's consistently has energy, which I think is, important maybe more so dealing with today's player than ever he's got really good energy he's a great teacher he uses language that is uh, what I mean by this from a teaching standpoint I think the language you use and the clarity that you use is extremely important and 
he's able to to really articulate his points using very few words, um, and he has the ability for his players to be able to to give that back, give that information back to him. Um, the other thing too is I think you know pushing him outside his boundaries, like um, in the spring, like he called um, almost every scrimmage, he called all the plays. I think that gave him really unique perspective. He did it a couple years ago in the in the going blue game but other than that that's that's the only time he's done it is this last spring so I think that added uh, a really perspective to him and I think that helped him and and in turn that's going to help me in the fall um, but no I'm really pleased with what, what he's doing right now where do you see Garrett and Nico's growth from the first spring practice through the summer to where you are now in terms of their understanding of what you want to do the things that they're suggesting maybe the back and forth are you seeing growth there from those two guys? Yeah, I thought today the, you know, it's one day. So, you know, ask me, you know, next week and I'll be able to give you a better answer. Uh, the thing that I like today about both those guys, very even keeled, you know, and, and Garrett is a younger player and maybe even in the spring to, to probably a little lesser extent, he's been, he's got great energy. Um, you know, his juice level is extremely high. Um, and what happened Previously, when he was a younger players, he'd, be, he'd have really highs and then really lows. And if you're a guy that kind of has a bounce to you and you're up every day, your lows are really magnified right. because, you know, somebody else is – if he's at a normal level, everybody's looking at him like, what's wrong? You know, and today I thought his energy level was good. Even he made a couple bad decisions, um, but it didn't affect him. And he was able to bounce back. And the same with um, with Nico. I think he's more comfortable. He's at ease, you know. Um, and both of them are competing for the job. And sometimes what happens when you get in these competitions in these singular jobs, where it's quarterback, kicker, is guys get really tense and they feel like the decision is based on every single play. And I thought uh, Nico was a little bit like that in the spring, and Garrett um, a little bit. But I thought both of them were much more at ease today. And didn't try to force things, uh, handled the negative plays better. And so I think uh, that that's growth. And, and we'll see how they continue to handle it as we move forward. Maybe not every play has to be spectacular. Yeah, that, that's, that's like we hit a lot more check downs today, which um, is a growth for the quarterback. Yeah, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, who's your alphas on each side of the ball. You know, if, if like speaking on defense right now, kind of our alpha over there is Lee Koba. And, and he's an aggressive by nature. He likes to talk. Um, things don't ne- – a bad play doesn't necessarily uh, affect him. And so, you know, if we can have his aggressive mentality defensively, then I think that's going to be a positive. But it has to, it has to happen. We can't, you can't necessarily force that. Um, but he's definitely the uh, the leader there, especially you know he and Sean in the front. And so I'd like for us to move forward, move toward kind of his mentality defensively. Yeah, Garrett. Yeah, without without a doubt. And Garrett, I mean, y'all 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 been around him. He and Nico both have a confidence about him, and you know they've both been really successful athletes. You know, Garrett was was a high level baseball player. Nico had an incredible comeback. Uh, you know, on ESPN in high school. I mean, they've had a ton of success, and they've got natural leadership skills, and they're likable. You know, which which and they both have. When I say like, I think you have from an energy level. When I say that, like when when people with like good energy come into a room, you kind of feel it. And, and both those guys have that. That just enrolled this mm-hmm. summer, sort of in three groups: wide receiver, defensive back, and defensive line. Mm-hmm. One of those positions easier to catch up quickly, without a spring behind them. And then is one just because a need more important for you to to really step forward right away? Well, I think the guys that have played a lot of football, it's an easier transition. So even Tyron Bradley, who's making a, a big jump from FCS to Power Five, but he's played a lot of football. And so his transition, Beanie Bishop, who's really a six-year guy, like his transition because he's played and, he, and he's basically done this um, where you come in for a year. He did that last year at Minnesota. 
so he kind of understands, probably learned some lessons from that experience that he's carrying forward here. Um, Anthony Wilson, you know, he's played a ton of football. So those transition, I think it's more the experience level of the player rather than the position. One of those groups to step forward just because. Well, of all the, the, really, to be honest with you, all those guys we took um, in that May kind of transfer uh, window, we need them to play. You know, like Tyron Bradley, I got him listed here. Tyron Bradley, he needs to push uh, Jared Bartlett. We need to be able to play both of those guys at the same time. Um, Beanie Bishop, you know, we need experience and he's got versatility. He can play inside and outside. Like, we need to get him ready to play. That's why we got him. Um, you know, Anthony Wilson, we need a we need a safety with experience. And he's played a ton of football and he's a good tackler. Uh, Tommy, we needed somebody that could play, you know, that had length. And now he's a younger player. He only played in four games last year at Kentucky. And so maybe he's not as far along and from an experience standpoint, but he's talented and he's big, and we need him to be a factor. Um Fatorma, an older guy, you know, was kind of a role player at Penn State. We need him to increase his role here. You know, and really push Hammond and Mike at that position. Um, Noah Massey, you know, last year guy. We wanted a guy that um, a big physical presence at in the slot receiver. Right now, we've got um, one one really true receiving uh, threat at tight end and Cole Taylor, and and then we've got a couple of young guys that maybe or maybe not going to be ready. So we wanted another kind of big body in the middle. So like he's got to be ready to play. Um, EJ Horton. You know, he was just coming on at Marshall, you know, right at the end of last year. And and he's played. And so he's got a unique skill set and he can really run. And so he's going to get plenty of opportunities to go do it. And so um, – but all those guys that we took in that May block, man, we need them to play. You know, that's why that's why they're here. How do you feel about Will right Dick, hey, Will linebacker? I think that's the, that's the question mark. You know, I don't think that's something that we shy away from is – um, we need to see that's if you were going to ask me like defensively what's the position that you're most intrigued by who's going to step up is it that will linebacker spot you know like we've got some candidates but a lot of them haven't played and so who's going to over the next two and a half weeks who's going to show that they're that they're ready and to me that's what the, the this first two and a half weeks of fall camp is like the transfers like I want to see them and how they mesh and how they take to our systems. Um, but I feel pretty good about those guys, getting them to a point where they're ready. What I'm really wanting to see is those guys that played for us last year but were maybe in lesser roles or maybe they were really young. Like, I want to see how big a jump those guys are going to make, you know, especially in the secondary. Jacoby Spells, Andrew Wilson-Lamp, Marcus Floyd going into year two. Um, I want to see those guys in the jump that they make um, from playing, you know, kind of minor roles or lesser roles last year to now being pressed into duty because that's what that's what's going to make our football team. That's what's going to make our football team is the guys that that make a jump from from a year ago. Neil, uh, general manager, mm -hmm. you never really talked about that yet. New addition. I'm assuming that's something you probably wanted to add for various reasons. Um, necessity. You yeah, well, Matt did a really good job. <clears throat> Matt Jansen did a really good job. And we wish him the best as he, as he moves on. And I thought we've done a – I'm proud of what we've been able to do in that department-wise, you know, as far as just um, – as, as college football has changed and evolved, I think we've kind of – our personnel department's really changed and evolved. Now we have truly a scouting department and that's really fo focused on college scouting or the transfer portal window. And then we have high school recruiting that's that's obviously aimed at high school and junior college recruiting. And so, and Matt's a big part of that, uh, of growing that. Um, and so now uh, Drew comes, and and he's a guy that got a ton of positive feedback on on people that I trust. When we opened that position, it, we it was it was non negotiable. We wanted somebody with NFL experience. And he's got 18 plus years of NFL experience um, at at both the the regional and the advanced scouting levels. Um, so we wanted to bring that NFL experience for for multiple reasons. You know, the first being instant credibility uh, within our within our building and being able to to communicate with our staff and with our current roster um, what the NFL, you know, what they're looking for, how they evaluate, 
what the individual player needs to do to continue to grow, to put themselves in a position uh, to play in the National Football League. And then having the, the scouting uh, background, because that's essentially what you're doing in the portal is you're taking the NFL model from a scouting perspective and you're applying it to a little bit younger guy at the college level. And so um, the other reason in – and I wanted somebody with experience because I want us to continue to develop the people within that department, you know. And uh, so excited about him. Uh, he started last week. Today was his, his first practice. And he's going to be a big benefit um, to not only me, but I think our players here and, and helping us continue to grow what we're doing in the portal. Speaking of the portal, still two spots left. We do. We do. And, and, and like I told you, um, I don't know, somebody asked me about it at the uh, at media days. And – we could, but we, we were open to taking one more. Um, and we, we pursued we pursued one guy that was in the portal and just got beat. And so um, – but I wanted to keep one, and now we have two open for, for guys that are walk-ons that, that earn that opportunity. And I think that's really important. Um, it, it's good for your locker room. It's good for your walk-on program, which has been really good for us, especially here in state. And so that's what, that's what we'll look at. You mentioned the chip on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's a that's a minor part of it. I think just the the fact that uh, really a sour taste, you know, in our in our in in really the whole program from from a year ago, where um, just where we underachieved, we we had some opportunities to to get bowl eligible and we didn't do that, and so I think that that burn and then you know maybe the lack of uh, the respect that we're getting in the preseason that that contributes to it. But I think the biggest piece of that is is last year. Obviously, you, you're going to want to have good players, and that's the number one reason to add them. But what are your thoughts on being discounted and then having it seems like having a lot of players, whether they were here or not, or even coming over, that also maybe have chips on their shoulders? It's like a collective group yeah. of players with chips on the shoulder, that it's the perfect storm almost if you're going to surprise people. Well, that's that's the hope. You know, I think if you go back and, and there's people in this room that, that have – John in particular and a couple other guys that can speak on the history of the program probably at, at, at a better than I can but I've done a lot of research since I've been here and I think that's kind of the the personality of our program is it's always been kind of a um, uh, somebody that's overlooked you know a, a blue collar program you know that's something that Mike and his staff we've really kind of hammered on all summer is the fact that, okay, hey, you prove them right or you prove them wrong, and it's really up to us. And the fact that you've got to have this burning desire, you know, and this hunger um, to really do better. And so um, if you go back and look at some of the best teams here, they haven't necessarily been picked, you know, to, to, to achieve at a high level. And so there's some, there's some solace in that. There's also some, you know, like you can go back to recent in the last three preseason polls and looked how – where people were picked and where they finished. And it's, you know, I said this at media days, I wasn't trying to be a smart ass, it's accurate. Like, like they haven't been very good at it. You know what I mean? Like, and so there's some solace in that too. Any position changes of note? No um, CJ Donaldson in the back pocket that you're <laughs> Nah, but let me, I'll, let me think about that. Um, we moved Davis to, to wide out. I think I told y'all that back in the spring. I don't think so. Nobody, nobody else. Back what? to play calling. Yep. You know, some advantages to managing the game. Can mm -hmm. you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so I did, a, I did a podcast the other day, and I got asked the same question. And so, so the communication is there's, there's less communication needed when the head coach is the play caller, you know, which is um, – so let's say from a data anal analytics – you know, this Randy Wilkins now used to be David Faulkner, but Randy Wilkins now is kind of my point guy on our data analytics. And so we really make a lot of these decisions on Thursday um, before the game of when we're going to go for it, uh, fourth down, when you're going to go for it, you know, for the touchdown or field goal. A lot of those decisions are made. Now, there's always kind of the ebb and flow of the game, you know. Um, but if – 
the head coach, not the play caller. Basically, what you do is, you know, on first or second down at the latest, you let the the guy know when he's got four downs. And um, as the head coach, you don't necessarily have to communicate that. And so you can kind of think ahead, and you don't have to sit there and go, "Hey, remember first down, second down," because we're gonna, we got you got three more. And there's so there's some advantages on that. You can also control the tempo of the game, which I think is important. Um, you know, I think a good example of that is when we played at Oklahoma. Um, what have that been? We got beat on the walk-off field goal, but we really controlled that game. You know, they were really potent in on offense coming into that game. Um, you know, we we huddled more um, and really controlled the time of possession, and they were able to kind of manage the game. And if not for a for an error there, we'd had a chance to at a field goal to win the game. And so, and that's not something that I sit there and talk to our team about. You know, we just had a plan. Hey, we want to shorten the game going into it, and you're able to do that. And so that's just an example how, as a head coach, you can really affect the tempo of the game. And and I think the offensive play caller has more of an impact on the tempo of the game than anybody else. And that's not discounting defense at all. It's just it, at how fast or rapid you're calling games and and then if you're going to be aggressive on fourth down or not. How do you feel about where you stand on uh, special teams, especially with uh, some turnover in the kicking game? Yeah, that, that's going to be a focus of us. You know, our, our field position differential has got to be better. Um, I really felt like that punt team-wise last year, we had a – we were really good on punt. And our snappers are really good. We got our team speed. Uh, is was 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 okay last year. It's even better this year. Uh, I think our punters got a chance to be elite. Um, and then we affected some some punts. Um, we got better in the return game once we went with Preston. I thought he did a nice job later in the year. Uh, but we were able to p- affect some punts. Uh, and so where we really struggled last year was on our kickoff defense. And some of that was we were a little erratic at kicker. Um, and some of that was we missed – I think we missed 16 tackles on kickoff last year, which is – I mean, that's absurd. That's way too high. In our kickoff return last year, um, we really made a bunch of poor decisions at the returner. You know, I think our average starting field position at kickoff return was on the 21-yard line, which give you an example, like um, I think Kansas State and maybe TCU is like the 28. That's a seven-yard difference. That's huge. And so our, our point of emphasis, we're going to continue to to be really good at the punt game. And then our kickoff defense and our kickoff return – it's got to be much, much better. And so I think you see that. We went out and invested in, in two returners. Beanie Bishop's returned a lot of kicks. Jay Sean Polk's been a, a high-level kickoff returner. Um, and so we're going to put those guys back there, and, and we're going to coach them up and make better decisions. Do, we're going to be different schematically. And then our kickoff team, we've had an emphasis on tackling going back to January, and, and that better show up on kickoff as well. Not really. <laughs> I mean, I mean, here's the thing. Like, I'm old enough to know. Like, when when they were in the conference, I played them. I put I played them in the Big Twelve before. So um, that's why I guess I got some gray in here, Tony. Um, now, here's my deal on expansion: is I've got I've got a ton of uh, of confidence in Commissioner Yormark. And so, however all this shakes out is because of my belief in him is West Virginia is going to be positioned well, and the Big 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 12 is going to be positioned well. Um, I don't really have much thought on Texas and Oklahoma. I really don't care. Um, and I don't mean that negative. I, I just really don't care. Same with Colorado coming in. I think it's a great addition. Um, you know, I think the – the I think it's genius to try to get in four time zones, you know, because it's all about TV. And if you can play in all four time slots on, on Saturday and, and be in a time slot on Thursday and Friday, it's pretty good business to me. And so um, that's how I would answer that. More about Wonder than Woody? Huh? More about Wonder Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm intrigued. It's a good story. Gives, it gives everybody something to talk about. Keeps college football in the press. So, uh, yep. Thank you all.